realizing what happens when it all goes digital. You know, what, what's happening is there's a digital digital barrier that's been created between us and, and reality and us and, and nature, you know. And we're getting to the point where we're going to have to need a mobile phone and, and a passcode to get into a park or to get into a car or to do any normal things, you know. So society is being restructured into this digital AI reality and this surveillance mechanism is um, constructed in such a way that it will weed out dissenters like you and me. You know, suddenly you'll go to, because we've had this conversation, I'll go, oh, well, such a day game. We've got to drop his social credit points, and you'll go to buy an airplane ticket and find you're not qualified for the airplane ticket. There's no one for you to call. There's no appeal process. You're just not qualified. You know, and you get barred from certain services due to your political viewpoint. They're doing this in China now. They've got over 7 million people on China's credit blacklist due to social crediting, and these people can't do things like um, ride on aircraft, can't uh, fly, uh, ride on trains. And many of them can't even rent houses. So it squeezes you completely out of the system. You know, and if you're a dissident, they can basically criminalize you by default by lowering your social credit points to the point that they've limited your purchase in power with just about everything. Can't fly, can't travel, can't rent a house. So they put you in a smart prison for your safety. But either way, you become an outcast. And they've done all sorts of stuff in China where they'd like put a uh, change your ringtone. So if you're on the blacklist and I call you, I'll get a message to say the person I'm calling is on the credit blacklist, do I wish to continue, proceed with the call. So then I'll get a little noticing mark against my name that I'm associating with bad characters. So, of course, I don't want to associate with you. you know? So this is, we start policing our own thoughts, and it's, it's just a way of squeezing all the dissenters out, and no one will even notice them disappearing. It won't be like there's this big, you know, the revolution will not be televised, you know. It won't be like this big blanket thing that you see. Suddenly, you'll just fall off the internet because you don't have enough social credit points to have a house and have the internet on, or you can't access it on your phone because of what you've said. So you just kind of everyone will be going, "What happened to Sasha?" You know, and suddenly you can't tell anybody because your purchasing power is limited, and you just disappear. You become a noticeable person with the whole surveillance state they're putting in. So you stand out in a crowd. You know, they got all this sort of stuff in place, tracking people by the way they walk and all this sort of stuff. And when you look at what they're saying is going to become uh, irrelevant soon and obsolete, they're saying things like newspapers, landlines, um, uh, even uh, GPSs. You won't have standalone GPSs because everyone will use their phone. So they're getting everybody dependent upon the phone. Um, and we're losing cash. Books will disappear. It's all becoming digitized. And then they can just lock you out of it, rewrite everything. You know, So it's a very dangerous situation that we're heading into, brother. And... A lot of people just aren't paying attention to it. They think it's all very smart and...